in question one, we are asked for the simple interest. So that's when we need to be looking at our formula sheet. And there's a formula here called simple interest. I equals PRN. P is the initial amount. R is the rate. And N is the number of periods. So let's use that. So I equals PRN. From the question, the principal amount is $500. The R is 8%, which as a decimal, which is what we use in simple interest, is 0 0.08. And N is 4 years. So putting those into the equation, 500 times 0 0.08 times 4. And using our calculator, we get $160. In this next question, we need to find what is the simple interest rate when $8,000 increases to $8,600 over three years. Two ways you could do that. The first way is I'm going to work it out by considering what is the interest that I've earned. This is simple interest. So I've earned interest of $600 in three years. So for one year, I have earned $200 worth of interest because in simple interest, we earn the same amount of interest each year. So I want to know what interest rate gave me $200 when I invested $8,000. So we can work that out by creating a percentage or finding a percentage of uh, these two amounts, 200 out of 800 times 100% will give us uh, a calculator answer. And the calculator gave us five on two. If we press the SD button, we get 2.5%. So that is our rates, which is answer A. Alternatively, we could have done this by substituting into the formula I equals PRN and solving the formula. We know the amount of interest is 600. The principal was 8,000. The rate we do not know. And we know that N is 3. So we have 3 eighths. We have, uh, sorry, this needs to go over here now. We have 600 equal to 24,000, 3 times 8,000 R. To solve that, we divide both sides by 24,000. And we will find again on a calculator that we get 600 over 24,000 gives us 1 over 40. Again, the SD button gives us 0 0.025, which to convert to a decimal, we multiply by 100. Sorry, to convert to a percentage, we multiply by 100 and get 2.5%. In question three, we're using the graph. What is the interest after three and a half years? A ruler comes in handy. Three and a half is here. So we go up. And when we get to the line, we come across. And we're halfway between 120 and 140. Scale is going up by 40 each time. So this is obviously a difference of 40. So halfway up is 20. So that means we are at 140. In question four, what was the amount of the investment shown in the graph in question three? So we're investing a rate of 4%, which is 0 0.04. Uh, if we look at one time period, we find that the interest amount is $40. We need to find out what principal we would need to multiply by 4% for one year to get $40. So the way we can do this is we have a, a little equation here. Zero, I'm just spinning it around the equal sign. I'm going to divide both sides by 0 0.04. And from that, we will find our answer by, uh, by a calculator is $1,000. There are other ways to do this. One way would be to work out 
4% interest for one year on each of these, sorry, each of these numbers and see which one of them gives us $40 for one year. Question five, James borrows $3,000, 10% interest compounding annually. What is the amount owed after two years? Again, we refer to the formula sheet. We have the compound interest formula here. So let's write that down. Let's work out what things we have. The principal is $3,000. The rate is 10% per annum, which is as a decimal 0.10 or 0.1. And the time period is two years. So putting all of those things into our formula, we have one plus 0.1 to the power of two. On our calculator, we're going to do 3000 open bracket, 1 plus 0 0.1 or 1 0 to the power of 2 and we get $3,630. Now for compound interest, this is the amount. We should check the question. What is the amount? So we have answered it correctly, $3,630. Question six, we need to work out the interest earned now for three years, $6,000, 9% compounding monthly. That means we need to convert several things to be monthly. Firstly, three years. So let's write our formula down. The principal is fine. We don't need to change that. The rate is currently 9%. So we need to divide that by 12 to make it to per month. Uh, we can do that on our calculator as 0 0.09 divided by 12 and we find that the answer for that is 0 0.0075. Uh, we also have uh, a value for n. n is currently three years but we want it monthly so we need three lots of 12 months which is 36. So back into our formula we have 6,000, 1 plus the rate to the power of the number of time periods and I missed a zero there. On our calculator 6,000 bracket 1 plus 0 0.0075 to the power of 36 gives us uh, this long answer 7851.872225 and that's one of the answers that's up here if we round to the nearest dollar however that would be incorrect because and I've run out of space the question asks us for the interest so the interest is the amount minus the principal. So in this case, the amount that we've just calculated, 7852, I've rounded off to the nearest dollar, subtract the $6,000 principal, and we get 1852, and that is question B, and that is the correct answer. In question seven, we are appreciating an amount by 7%. There is uh, either the compound interest formula can be used for appreciation or the future value formula. I'm going to use the future value formula. So the future value of this item equals the pre present value times 1 plus r to the power of n. The present value is 460,000. The rate is 7%, which equals 0 0.07, and the time period is 4 years. So again, Substitute that into the formula and use a calculator. We get this number six hundred and two thousand nine hundred sixty six dollars and sixteen cents. To the nearest dollar, uh, we would just round off here. This is less than five, so all that goes. 602966 is our answer, which is D. And question eight, Chloe bought some shares. 
uh, we need to find the total cost. So she has to pay for the 800 shares at $10.20 each, plus she's paying a brokerage cost. This is a one-off fee. So we just add that once. And on the calculator, that's 800 times $10.20 plus the $38 and we get $8,198, which is answer C.